everyone. How are you guys today? It's actually Monday and you guys are live here on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint Brand Ambassador. Normally I paint with you guys live on Thursday so I don't mean to throw you guys off. I know you're here to see Malia. Uh, Malia had some stuff she needed to take care of today so I'm jumping in to be live for her and so you guys get a Monday dose of Brandy. I'm sorry for that. Um, I also have my husband Sean here, so if you guys have any questions along the way, pop on and let me know what they are. We'll answer any questions. But today what we're going to be working on is this piece behind me. And this piece is gorgeous, you guys. I'm almost done with it. Um, it's this curvy uh, little Bombay chest that I'm going for, a really vintage French feel on it. It just feels very vintage, very French. So I'm letting the furniture speak to me, and that's what it's saying. And so what I'm gonna start with today is we are going to apply the lace transfer. This is one of the new transfers from Dixie Belle. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys something, and that is that we um, brand ambassadors are going to have exclusive access to these um, starting Wednesday. So if you guys have a favorite brand ambassador, go find them, and on Wednesday, these will be available through your brand ambassador's links as well. Right now, you can find them at your existing elite retailers, your um, Dixie Bell retailers, which you can find at the link I put above in the post. So this is what the lace transfer looks like, and I like this transfer because it has one really cool feature, and that is that it's a continuous design, whether you wanna go horizontal with it or you wanna go vertical with it. So you can take this design and you can build it into four squares like this. You can build it into a straight vertical design like this, or you could go all horizontal with it like this because it's continuous on all edges. So if you think about that, that really opens up the amount of designs that you can do with this transfer. So the way that I'm going to use it is I'm going to put it in a linear design along the side of this, um, this chest here. So this comes in four sheets and they're actually all numbered. Can you guys see the numbers in the top corner? So I'm going to cho choose sheet one. Oh. I know, they made it really easy for me. I don't even have to do the counting. So I want, it to, I want my transfer to fit right up to the top of this little edge right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut off this little extra piece uh, that doesn't have any printing on it. And that's just so I can butt my transfer right up into that molding. I don't need this little extra piece right here. So one thing I like to have out when I'm going to be doing um, transfers is I always make sure I have out a pair of scissors, a razor knife, an X-Acto knife, um, the transfer tool that comes in the package with my transfer. Um, those are some good tools to head out. So I'm just gonna cut that top off. The other thing I'm gonna think about is I wanna run this down my chest. And so I'm gonna cut off this portion down here, right up to the printing. And that is so that when I run these two together, the two pieces, you cannot see a seam there. So I'm just going to cut off the little tiny bit. Um, let me try to show you guys what I'm talking about. If I look at my transfer along the edges, can you guys see it's got this clear, it's got a little clear line right there. If I cut that off, I can butt my printed line right into each other without having this clear halo overlap each other because that's when it becomes really visible. So I'm actually going to cut that off on the bottom. So yes, that, Bonnie, I'm here. I'm too quiet Sean apparently. Sean is here. I pulled, you guys, I pulled Sean off. Sean does have a day job. He doesn't just do my lives <laughs> for me. That does not pay very well. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, during the day. Yeah, yeah, he does have a day job. <laughs> and so he's trying to work and I just said, hey, I took a live from Malia. Do you want to come live with me? And he was like, okay. Like Thursday nights are given, it's after work, but I just pulled him off of his desk job to come be live with us. So we really appreciate Sean right now. Very nice. That means I don't have to pay attention to my camera. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of just dry place this with the backing on. I wanna make sure that I get it right up to this edge and I'll show you guys how I'm gonna handle this edge right here in just a minute. But I wanna make sure that I get right up to the edge of this chest. All right, right about probably there is good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my backing sheet off. And these two just peel right apart. 
So I love this lace design because it's a very simple design and it looks like a really um, fancy stencil, but takes much less work to apply. And um, it's printed in a kind of a light gray color. So it looks good over um, dark paint colors. It looks good over light paint colors. I'm putting it on my base here is Dixie Belle Vintage Duck Egg. And then I shaded it with some hurricane gray and it's got a little bit of drop cloth in the middle. So my three colors are drop cloth, vintage duck egg and hurricane gray are what I'm putting this transfer over. So I just found my placement and I'm going to go ahead and stick my transfer on there just by rubbing it a little bit. And then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife. This is a razor knife and I'm going to cut off these excess edges right here. So I'm just going to find a place and I'm just going to slice it right along the back edge of my chest. It's very awkward. <laughs> just like I know. Uh, cut a little piece of the wood right there. You mean to get uh, a chainsaw? Yeah, a chainsaw would help. <clears throat> and then I actually save these until I'm done with my transfer just to make sure that I don't need any little scrap pieces anywhere. Okay, and then here where it kind of comes to this curve, I'm gonna take my razor knife and I'm gonna ride this edge right here and I'm just gonna slice my transfer, not nope. my finger. Apparently I need to get on the payroll for Brush by Brandy. Oh, I'm kind of digging yeah, this. Yeah, Brush by Brandy pays terrible. Oh, have, I'm so sorry guys, we except have, for that incident, then it, that all, that all goes <laughs> yeah, south. And then you get fired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Brush by Brandy has a terrible benefits package too. Yeah. Sean's 401k plan is much better. <laughs> so I just uh, I just rode my razor knife right along that curvy edge and then I can pull this off and now my transfer fits right here. Um, and I cut it, uh, Can you? I don't know if you can tell, but down here, this trim comes out a little bit. So I would hate for this transfer to go further and then come in here. So I'm actually gonna let it go a little bit shy just like this trim piece right here will so it's consistent all the way down. And I'm gonna save that little piece there. Um, they come in the package with this transfer tool. This is unsealed paint, you guys. I don't, I do not have a clear coat over my paint, and I'm just gonna lightly rub over my transfer. And I go over it just one time, trying to hit all the points of my transfer. Now this transfer is really detailed. It's got a lot of fine details in it. Some transfer designs are more solid. So if I was doing, you know, solid designs like, you know, the big flowers here or something that was a solid pattern, but this has a lot of details in it. It means it's going to take me a little bit longer to apply. So that's something to consider when you're choosing your transfer is just know that when they're really detailed like this, they do take a little bit longer. It's normal. Don't feel like it's you. Um, my paint has dried. Oh gosh, when did I put this on? The day before yesterday and that was i would let it dry overnight but um it's day before yesterday just happened to be when i had painted this so i've gone over my transfer one time and then i'm going to start actually pulling back this backing sheet so i find a corner the way you can tell that it's separated from the backing sheet is this is a good spot right here it catches an air bubble in between the backing sheet and it starts separating. So I want to find a spot like that. That's where my um, backing sheet is going to be loose. And then I'm going to slowly start pulling it away, telling the transfer, like, it's time to say goodbye, you guys. You guys need to let each other go. You need to live on your own now. So and this I, is why it always sounds like you have a party on I, 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 I talk them through it. I uh -huh. feel like it's, you know, it's like saying goodbye at the airport. You need to just, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay on your own, little transfer. No luggage? <laughs> no, no. They, just I mean, baggage. emotional baggage, yeah. but not, but they pack light, you know? And so then I start and I pay attention to all my little details as I'm rubbing. I'm making sure that nothing wants to pull back with my clear backing sheet. Okay, so I go nice and slow, but pulling this, tra this transfer sheet back as you go will help them want to separate it. Even if I rub over it, I could rub over it a hundred times, just leaving it like this. And I still probably will go to lift this up and it won't be stuck to the back. You need to start picking up your backing sheet, letting that air get in between your transfer and the, and the clear backing. And that's what's gonna really make them separate from each other. I'm kind of working at a diagonal, so I've gotta go all the way across this line right here, making sure that it's all separating. I don't wanna go too fast 
Because if I were to just yank this, I'm going to end up ripping this transfer. Now, could you go back and put uh, like a transfer of some flowers or something on top of this? Could you oh, layer? Oh, yeah. You can totally layer the transfers. It would be really pretty. So this lace transfer would be pretty if you layered it with like the magnolia. You know, a pretty flower up in this corner. Because this is kind of a solid design. It almost looks like a wallpaper or something. This could absolutely be a background that you would layer, um, so, you know, something special on top of. But you can absolutely layer the transfers so i said in the beginning of this you guys uh there will be some exclusive brand ambassador access to the transfers starting on wednesday so find your favorite brand ambassador and you can support them by using their link to order the transfers starting on wednesday now if i have a favorite <laughs> you better have a favorite is it gonna be awkward <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you looking for Tracy's link? As yeah, exactly. I didn't say it had to be you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's stuff I mean, that comes with no, the ring, but no, outside of that. No pressure at all. Yeah, but, no big deal. I mean, if I catch you. <laughs> oh, oh, is that the yeah. trick? So doing up one side of this, I want to say, you know, each piece of this took me, you know, 15 minutes per piece. So just... Just give it some time. My, my arms get a little weary because I'm sitting down low, so I gotta put pressure up kind of high. Um, I think transfers are a process. It's not a super quick one and done. That is not what a transfer is. It, there is an art to applying a transfer as well. But I'm getting down to the bottom. And then I'll show you some things I like to do after I get these on. When you get down to the bottom, you want to be careful because you don't want to pull away too quickly. I'm still watching all these little edges of my transfer design. So on this here curvy piece, yes. what's this transfer? This is called the lace transfer. This is the new one of the new transfers from Dixie Bell. These are available now at your um, Dixie Bell Elite retailers. And on Wednesday, uh, there will be some exclusive brand ambassador access to the transfers too. So, I mean, if you didn't otherwise think there was a reason for sticking with us, sometimes we get perks. Uh, there are 12 Dixie Bell brand ambassadors. So, uh, any of us, our links will work for these as of Wednesday. All right. And I'm to this very last corner. I'm going to take this slowly because I... Um, I have it coming from both directions and I don't want to pull my transfer off like I just did, but that's okay because I'm now I'm just going to match it back up to where it would have gone and I've got a little tiny piece that I need to make sure sticks. It's really easy to rip that last portion. So I just rub that on. All right, my transfer's on. I really, really like the placement of it, but now I'm going to go over it with my fingers. And I agree, just, Dana. This looks gorgeous. It's with really pretty, huh? With the gray over that back, or with the, the gray print over my background. So I rub it with my fingers, and that is because I'm looking for any areas that aren't all the way stuck down. I'm going to press them down. Get in there. Make sure it's nice and clean. This one, like I said, has a lot of fine detail, so I'm just going to kind of go along over all these edges. Trust me, it's worth the time. And I can see a little bit of the halo on here, but let me show you a couple things that are going to solve that. So I take my Dixie Belle finishing pads. These are also available on the website and I cut these. Uh oh, Brittany stumbled in. Uh oh. <laughs> Midday. <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Did you get lost, Brittany? Hard day with the kids already. This is Malia's time slot, you guys. Malia from Mustard Tree Market had some stuff going on she had to take care of today. So we um so I'm stepping in for her today. She will be back with you guys at this time slot next week though. Now do you come back and seal this? Yes, we're going to do that today too. So I'm going to take my Dixie Bell finishing pad and I'm just going to lightly rub over it all. Now you're going to see some of the little edges are going to start coming up and I just rub them away. Let's see? get to the important stuff. What What's your nail color? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, ah, what is this color called? I can't remember. They always have, it's called done. They always have crazy names. It's never just red. It's like, I don't know. Flashy stiletto red. I don't know. I have no clue what it is. It's by um it's by Essie. It's their gel polish. 
E-S-S-I-E. I like their gel polish. They don't pay me, I just genuinely like it and I'm really hard on my hands. Okay, so this helps my um, halo disappear to just buff over this. I made sure to go over it with my fingers first and that make sure that I don't have any areas that are lifting because if I did, guess what's gonna happen when I scrub at it with this? I'm gonna pull it right off. But this takes that little edge and it just makes it disappear. <laughs> Dixie both said, I'd love that you're able to paint wear nail polish. Your I know. It's it's a rarity. It's a labor of love. Like I tell people that it drives me nuts to have messy nails. So Me too. Who's on? Is that you, J Pell? Who's on for Dixie Bell right now? And I never know, but I think I think J Po does Malia's. Okay, so I'm just buffing out this little bit of a halo. Oop, I'm falling off my chair. Oh. And I'm getting too excited. Because I'm almost to the end. I've got a little piece right here. And what are you scrubbing this with? Uh, this is the Dixie Bell finishing pad. So these are nice too if you, uh, you can use these over your finished paint finish and it just kind of buffs away your, your paint finish um, and makes it a little bit smoother without being as abrasive as a sanding sponge. So it's, it's just a light abrasive. Jody's heading up the uh, Dixie Bell coming. Oh, Jody. Oh, Jody. I don't know why I thought it was J-Po. I know that it's, duh. I'm sorry, Jody. Hey, Jody. You guys, Jody's over in the UK. It's nighttime for her. Okay, so we're going to work on this section. I'm not going to try to do all the way down the side because you can kind of see, but I would basically match up my next piece to this edge exactly. And you want to make sure when you're matching that, I'm going to look for sheet number two. Oh, I now would... i got to know my numbers. Yeah, yes, in order. Remember <laughs> which one you started with, the number one, right? And then I'm going to cut this top edge just like I did, and I would match them right up, match my pattern all the way across. And then you're going to kind of seed it down and trim your edges. But let's just work with this part right here. Um, so from here, I would go ahead and apply some clear coat. So I recommend with um, transfers that you want to use, I, I like our satin clear coat. Um, satin or flat will work. Um, I, I get, you can use gloss too if you prefer gloss. Is it necessary to buff after you apply it? I prefer, I just think the results are better. I, you don't have to, if you're happy with the result, you definitely do not have to, but I feel like it takes that halo on the print. Let me show you what I mean when I say halo. It takes the halo on the print of the transfer, which is the clear portion on the outer, um, the outer ring of the print and it makes it so you don't see that in your final product so that's the reason that i go through and buff it all so no it's not required your transfer is on there it's going to be fine but i think the results are better with that buffing so that's really pretty all right so um you can use any of the dixie bell clear coats with a transfer if you want to use gator hide i recommend that you put a coat of another sealer over and then gator hide you don't want to put your gator hide in direct contact with the transfer um so i'm just going to take a brush and i lightly misted it with some water so it's a little bit um damp and i'm just going to try to go over the portion i put my transfer on because i still need to do the rest of this side and I'm just going to coat that. And you can kind of see how the combination of that rubbing and adding the clear coat over top and that halo that, I mean, you can't even see it at this point. It's gone. So that's, those are the tricks to getting rid of that so it's not visible is burnish your edges of the transfer. And then once you put that clear coat over the top, it disappears just about. All right, I need a minute for this. It's a thin layer of clear coat. It's not going to take too long to dry. But can you come down and we'll work on the bottom oh while we gosh. let this sit and dry for a minute? And then something we'll, with you. And then we'll put some waxes over this. The reason I chose to put clear coat over before I put my waxes on is because I don't want waxes to find all those little edges of my transfer. And so the clear coat seals it off so that the waxes aren't going to want to get stuck in the edges of the transfer. That Sorry, just makes guys. all the edges more evident. So I'm a little shaking just to get low. Get low. And then I'll show you guys how I'm going to finish off this look here. With waxes. 
And you did not clear before you put the transfer I did on. not. That was on on top of raw paint and the clear coat just is over the top of it. So we're going to let that hang out and dry for a minute. I am going to add some waxes over the top of this. And then I'll put another coat of clear over it. But I want to work down here on some of this trim. Um, so I shaded really out my trim in a little bit of hurricane gray over top of my um, vintage duck egg. And now I'm going to take some Dixie Belle waxes. And I've got out... Um, Dixie Belle Wax in black, in brown. Um, let's use those two for now. I did end up using white as well. So I'm going to take my Dixie Belle Wax in black and brown. Um, when I'm shading with waxes, because I'm not doing it, and the difference between shading and, and using it all over, I'm not using the wax all over for protection. I just want the wax as a decorative accent. When I'm using it just for shading, I like really old waxes. My waxes are dried out. These are the, the old packages. These are, I don't know, they're not even dated, they're so old. But I let them get dried out and cracked. And these are great for just shading with because they're nice and firm versus I have a brand new tin of Dixie Belle wax. It's super soft like margarine. Okay, so can you see the difference? This is my old brown wax and this is my new brown wax. I would use this for all over because it's nice and soft and I can rub it and it's it's just gonna smear like it's smooth as silk. I, the Dixie Belle waxes are really nice and soft, but when I wanna make it go in a deliberate place, I use old waxes and I leave the lid off of them so that they get this way. So if you've got old waxes, do not get rid of them. They're actually really nice for doing accents with. So I'm gonna use my old waxes, and I'll show you in a minute what I would use my new wax on this for. This is unsealed paint. <laughs> Elizabeth says we have her all confused because we're at three o'clock, we're doing a three o'clock. I know, I know. Eastern. What if I told you it was Thursday at 6 p.m.? Oh. 9 p.m. Yes, 9 almost 6 Friday. PM my time, yeah. Almost yes. Friday, yes. Happy Thursday! <laughs> Forget the rest of the week. <laughs> Everyone's like, what the heck? It was a blur. So I'm going to take this little artist brush. These are natural bristle artist brushes. And let me show you another one. I don't know. What do I have in here? They come in all different sizes and shapes, but natural bristles. And I get these. I have these in my Amazon shop. So this is a natural bristle artist brush. It's like a little tiny baby wax brush. It's like if a mommy wax brush and a daddy wax brush had a baby. We're not doing birds and bees. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm just going to outline this little trim right here in a little bit of my black wax. This is black wax right here. We'll use the brown in just a minute. And I'm just going to go around these little curly cues. Because I'm basically going to create like a, like a soft wax shadow around them. This is unsealed paint. So when do I put wax on unsealed paint versus sealed paint? Um, when I want more control, I want to wipe more back, I would seal my paint first. It gives you more control. Here, I'm okay if it looks a little bit heavy. All right, once I've got it all around my little curly cues, I'm going to take a, a slightly larger natural bristle, little artist brush, and I'm just going to work this wax in and kind of smudge it out. And wax has that nice characteristic that it gets smeary and smudgy. You can't do this with a glaze. And it's just going to soften the edges of all these curly cues. What would these be called? Moldings? I guess they could be called moldings or something fancy like that. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to kind of carry it out so I just get a lighter hand as I go out and then I can kind of soften this at the very edges so it just looks like it fades out. I just get a lighter hand with it. I didn't add any wax to the second brush. I'm just using the wax that was on the surface. And I go around all these little edges, just kind of smearing that wax out. So I do have a shaded paint finish, but the wax just kind of adds to that. It's every layer adds a little bit of dimension with it. So this is a little bit of shading with waxes. And then I'm going to take my brown, my brown wax, my dried out brown wax, and another, yet another brush. So I'm at three little artist brushes, and I'm just going to barely any wax on there. 
barely any wax and I'm just gonna lightly go over that. I just like the, uh, the brown on the black and I'm gonna take the brown out even a little bit further. It's like a lighter shade of the black coming out from it. Okay, and I'll do over here, I can't see that part very well, but I'll do over here. And then I would take my gold gilding wax. This is my gold gilding wax from Dixie Belle, and I'm just gonna lift my finger kind of sporadically. <clears throat> paint with the gilding wax around the edges of these guys. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going for kind of a vintage look on this. I may even add a little bit of gold leafing on the front. And I'm just gonna follow it all the way around. Got some leaves here, so I'm gonna start at the top and I just pull the wax. It's got that smeary, smudgy effect, the waxes do. And so I just pull them down towards the bottom. <clears throat> you know what? No, I don't know what. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't know both. Okay, I'm gonna go. You going mobile? I'm going mobile. Because oh, I can't uh -oh. get I can't get low enough. With all this crazy stuff. Yeah, we're it's kind at. of a weird angle because uh let's see, what do you want? You're on that's you know uh, Facebook. Shh. Wants a horizontal orientation Let's when we have a vertical working. piece. <laughs> okay, there, <laughs> YouTube commenter. All right, and then same thing. I take my um, this natural bristle artist brush and I'm going to ride these crevices here. You could do this part with a glaze, but I like the softness of the waxes on here. So I'll outline that. Come back with my slightly fatter brush. I mean... My brush that's gained a COVID-20 right here. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's a yeah. curved piece yeah. with lace. The fat brush. I mean, <laughs> Everything's a what little, are we throwing little, in here? A little chunky. Yeah. Could still pull off a bikini if it wanted okay. to, but it's not quite the same. So same thing. I just will rub that. And then I can buff out a little bit. Like right here, I got a little bit extra. So I just can take and buff that out. That's a nice shirt. This is unsealed paint. It's, it's my favorite shirt. Huh, that's weird. It's mine too. Before it came out here. That's all unsealed paint and it just adds a little bit. It just looks like looks like a little dirt got stuck in there and it just hasn't quite washed away over time. And then smear it out. This kind of works it into the paint a little bit too. All right, and then if I feel like I have any excess, like this line right here that I didn't want to get any on, but that that little bit of buffing, I can just take a little bit of water because Dixie Belle waxes are water-based waxes. And I can just kind of clean the top ridge of that molding up. Okay, I'm gonna do up here, but I'm gonna wait till I have my transfer on because this is coming down from the top. So I'm not gonna do this top line until I get that transfer on. But I am going to do all of these guys down here. Just writing all those crevices and then coming back with this little bit softer brush and just softening that wax a little bit. And then I'll do the same thing and clean up that little ridge with a little bit of water, my water-based wax. Just the edge of this line right here so it has contrast. It's dark in the low points and then my high points are nice and clean with my vintage duck egg. Let's see how our clear coat's doing up here. It's still a little tacky. Maybe I'll put a heat gun on it so we can come put some waxes up here. I'm just drying my clear coat a little bit so I can come add some waxes up here so I can show you what I want to do with the waxes up top. Alright, 
it's a little tacky. I think part of that's from the heat. All right, so up here I shaded with my paint and I kind of have a lighter section right here. That's a little bit of my drop cloth. So for that, I don't want to lose that. So I'm going to take a little bit of white wax. I'm going to be kind of gentle on this because I just sealed it. I'm going to take a little bit of white wax. Now white wax I don't think is a replacement for shading with your paint, but it's just going to help it retain that contrast. I'm going to put a little bit of white wax there, and then I want to make my edges darker. I'm going to take a little bit of my brown. And this just kind of adds to the shaded effect that I did with the paint. So you can blend with your paint, but you can blend with your waxes too over the top of your paint. This is sealed paint. We did put some satin clear coat on this a little bit earlier. Uh, what metal holder do you use for your heat gun? It's a hair dryer holder. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's on the back of my uh, workbench and that it's just a holder for a hair dryer. My heat gun sits perfectly in there. All right, so I did my brown wax here. I did my white wax in the center. I'm gonna work them together. This is my brush for my white wax. And I'm just going to kind of work them together. Elizabeth says she wished she was at least a, even a sixteenth as good as you. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, it's, I'm not even... It's, it's yeah. overrated. Trust me. All right, so that's kind of what I'm going to do with my waxes. And it's just going to kind of emphasize this little bit of a highlight. It'll darken around the edges. I think I'm going to use a little bit of my black wax on the very outermost portions. So I'm just going to kind of darken these here. So I do this anytime I do a blended paint finish, it's got wax work in it too. Looks like it's all with the paint. A lot of it's with the waxes too. I'm a big fan of layering. I'm gonna put a little bit of black wax in this crevice right here, just like I did down at the bottom. And I'll do that, I'll do the same thing with the black wax down at the very bottom. So my edge, my very outermost edges are a little bit darker. And then I see, I can't tell if this looks like a stripey line right here. Let's work them together a little bit more. So I think the waxes just kind of add to my paint effect a little bit. It's not meant to change it. It just makes that little subtle bit of difference. So this is going to be going all the way down the side. Now here's where I'm stuck on this piece is I've got, um, I'm using two transfers on this. Okay. So um, once uh, each transfer comes with four of these sheets, this side takes three, the other side takes three. Then I've got two sheets left over and I'm debating whether I should, maybe you guys can help me with this, whether I should put them on the top drawers of this piece. So tell me what you guys think. If this were yours, and I'm not done with the front either, um, would you put the transfer on the top drawers? What do you guys think? Weigh in, because I'm, I'm torn on it. Sean told me no, which means I'm leaning towards yes. Yep, every time. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Would it's you been tested, tried and true. Let me show you what the hardware on this one looks like. My hardware is painted as well. So then this hardware would go over top of it. So I put my transfer on with this beefy hardware. Or do I just leave it with the paint finish on the front and the transfer goes on the sides? See, I think, oh, never mind. What I think, <laughs> what I think doesn't matter. Yeah. So I don't know. I need some opinion there. But that is, whoops, my scrap just it's kind of a 50-50. Oh, is it? Yeah. Interesting. So I say no. I'm not sure. The handle's too big. No, these you are lose gorgeous. It. Okay, my hardware is painted too, you guys. I just dry brushed a little bit of Dixie Belle cotton. I agree, cotton. they're gorgeous on their own. I dry brushed a little bit of cotton on them. Uh, it was kind of a brown metal finish. 
dry brush some cotton, um, a little bit of my gold gilding wax, and then I sprayed them in a clear lacquer. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I have some gray wax on there too. And my hardware's painted too. So you can make your hardware any color you want it to be. And then it looks really pretty with my, with my transfer. All right, you guys. So that is about it. That's where I'm going with this piece. I'm gonna finish the wax work, finish getting this transfer down the side. Um, and then this one's almost, almost done. Um, and, I'll, and then I'll go ahead and spray it with clear coat. Um, I'll spray it with, what do I wanna spray? Probably Gator Hide? Yeah. Now that I've got that satin over my transfer, there's a, it forms a barrier and I can go ahead and put Gator Hide over the whole thing if I want. I just recommend putting some, um, of one of the other clear coats in between before you put, uh, don't put Gator Hide directly on your transfer. All right, so I hope that was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Wednesday, go to your favorite brand ambassadors. They will have the transfers available exclusively through their links. Right now you can also get them through the Dixie Belle Elite retailers that you can find at the link in the post. Um, you can also find any of the Dixie Belle waxes we used here today, the finishing pad, all of those are also available at the link in the post. Um, come back next week. You guys will catch Malia at this time slot. Um, I'm live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, set your alarms. The, the Facebook notifications are not doing great right now for notifying you guys. Um, so set a personal alarm on your phone if you've got favorites you like to watch. Um, you guys have a great week, and I will, I will catch you guys on Thursday.